Hello and welcome. Uh, this movie is about 100 gig VAC and I would like to cover the following subjects. Uh, what is VAC? Uh, VAC advantages and disadvantages, VAC settings per switch, an example of our test lab and also some CLI commands. I can turn it on and off. Well, first, what is VAC? VAC is the RS VAC Read Solomon Forward Error Correction. It adds correction information to the data packages at the transmitting end and corrects bit errors at the receiving end. That's basically what VAC does. It improves the signal quality, but it increases the transmission delay. RS VAC is also compliant with the IEEE. Um, as mentioned here and it's also only for 100 gig and 25 gig that we see it uh, so 100 gig and 25 gig ethernet communication uh, the rsvac is causing about 250 nanoseconds delay and it determines the distance for example for a qsp 28 sr with vac you can run it to 70 uh, meters uh, on om3 and without VAC 30 meters and this also can be seen with the QSP 28 ER so the 40 kilometer version without VAC it's 30 kilometers and with VAC it's 40 kilometers uh, you have some optics that do require VAC to function and that's for example the 2 kilometer CWM4 um, but the rest like the ER4, LR4 and SR4 they simply can reach further when you turn the VAC on and for the duct cables, so the copper cables, it's depending on the length of the cable, if it's needed or not. Uh, well, how does it function? Well, two devices are connecting with 100 gig. They basically both need the same RS VAC configuration. For example, we have a communication from uh, device A to B on 100 gig. If you turn on device A, you turn it uh, VAC on, VAC on, you will have a link. VAC off, VAC off, you will have a link. If VAC is on on A and off on B, you don't have a link. But if you have VAC off, VAC off on both sides, but it's a CWM4, you don't have a link as well because that optic does require VAC to function. Uh, the VAC settings are done on different ways. Uh, typically, it's done by the switch or router itself. The switch or router itself will look to which model type it is, if it's an SRLR, CWM4, a copper, and turns it on or off. Uh, based on that. Um, you can sit here uh, for an SR, uh, in this case it turns it off, an LR it simply uh, turns it off, and CWM4 it turns it on. This is not all the same with all the vendors and that's a bit the problem with every uh, with communication uh, between 200 gig devices. You also have a, a situation that you don't have a VAC on a device and you also have some cases that it's always on on a device and you simply cannot switch it off that's a sample here from our solid optics test center uh, here are our 100 gig devices we have a juniper with uh, a vac uh, which is uh, based on the, the the cfp type itself we have a melanox 100 gig card uh, which always have have it on so the vac is always on uh, we have a Huawei switch here, which can be turned on and off uh, depending on the type, if it's an LR, SR, and so on. And we have a Cisco Nexus 9K here, and that uses CFP2s, and that doesn't have VAC. Well, if we want to make a connection between the Mellanox and here the Huawei, uh, we need to put the Huawei switch, we have to put the VAC on. Because LR, is, um, in the configuration of Huawei and LR, it will switch the VAC off, but the Mellanox has it always on. And to make a connection, we have to switch it on at the Huawei part here. Here are some commands for Huawei, Juniper and Cisco, how you can turn it on and off. Uh, basically, all the brands will have these commands in it. Thank you very much.